Hey YouTube, it's James, back with another episode of Vintage Tech Junkie. Today we are going to talk about ham radio, or amateur radio, whichever you prefer to call it. For the purposes of this video, we'll call it ham radio, since that is the most widely used term for it. So, where did the name ham radio come from anyway? While the exact origin remains a bit unclear, the most likely theory suggests that the term ham originated as a derogatory slang used by professional telegraphers and commercial radio operators to describe amateur radio operators. The amateurs often had less powerful or sophisticated equipment, and their signals could sometimes interfere with the work of the professionals. The term ham-fisted was used to describe someone with poor telegraphy skills, and over time, ham became a term for amateur radio operator. And while the term ham radio started as a derogatory term, for better or worse, it has been embraced by the amateur radio community, and today it is used with pride by enthusiasts worldwide. It no longer carries the negative connotations that it might have had in its early days, and has become a widely accepted term for non-professional radio operators who engage in the hobby of amateur radio. Although you'll still occasionally find a grumpy ham who still takes offense to being called a ham, those folks are usually few and far between, and generally a lot of fun at parties. And that gets us to where we are today. They say ham radio is a dying hobby, but is it though? If you're not already in the ham radio community, it seems like everywhere you look, ham radio is categorized alongside VHS tape recorders and tube televisions as technology slated to disappear. So, the million dollar question is will the amateur airwaves eventually fall silent? Since the dawn of radio, hams have transmitted on tenaciously guarded slices of radio spectrum. Our general enjoyment of modern technology wouldn't be possible without the tremendous benefit of ham radio operators. But the rise of the internet in the 1990s with its ability to easily connect billions of people captured the attention of many potential hams. Now with time taking its toll on the ranks of operators, new technologies offer opportunities to revitalize amateur radio, even if in a form that previous generations might not recognize. And while it's true that ham radio will never have the same appeal as a fancy new iPhone or latest gaming system, these are two different animals. In 2018, it was reported that the number of U.S. amateur licenses has held at an anemic 1% annual growth for the past few years, with about 7,000 new licenses added every year for a total of 750,000 towards the end of 2018. From 2018 to 2023, that number increased to about 20,000 new licenses being added on average year over year over the past five years to a total of about 850,000 licensed hams towards the end of 2023. That ends up being a 2-3% to annual growth since 2018. However, over the past year, the technician license class has decreased at an average rate of 3 per day which means that there are less and less new hams getting into the hobby today. While the general license class has increased at an average rate of 10 per day, and the extra class has increased at an average rate of 6 per day, which means existing hams are continuing to develop their skills and expertise and leveling up their license classes. While the technician class license is basically like the introductory license to ham radio, the general class and extra class licenses offer much more privileges and spectrum to work with. This data basically confirms that those hams who get into the hobby tend to enjoy it and progress quite a bit. This is encouraging news. The U.S. Federal Communications Commission doesn't track demographic data of operators, but anecdotally white men in their 60s and 70s make up much of the population. As these baby boomers age out, the fear is that there are too few young people to sustain the hobby. And that's not really surprising since it's easy to pick up an iPhone and communicate and gather information, much easier than you can do with a ham radio. Ham radio shouldn't try to compete with the new technologies though. That's a battle that will never be won. We need to shift our perspective from operator to enthusiast. And many ham radio enthusiasts were instrumental in developing many of the modern technologies alive today that, ironically, are perceived to be dealing the death blows to the ham radio hobby. We shouldn't fight the emergence of new technology, we should embrace it. But don't try to make ham radio a consumer hobby. Embrace new technology with the principles of ham radio and continue to evolve and create new and interesting ideas. If you're watching this video to this point, you're probably already at least somewhat interested in ham radio, or technology at least. I would encourage you to study and take the ham radio exam and get your license. Yes, it's an antiquated process to get your ham radio license, it's cumbersome, it requires you to put in some effort and engage with other people to accomplish it. It's not supposed to be easy and you won't emerge an expert. 
but getting your license is really just the start of the process. It's a license to learn. Having a ham radio license gives you an opportunity to open a whole other world of cool things and endless possibilities and gives you access to a spectrum of radio frequencies that will enable you to communicate across the room or across the world or even into space with a single direct link. It's a hobby that will keep you engaged and open your mind to endless possibilities. It's different and it's supposed to be. Ham radio isn't intended to be a consumer hobby and it's not for everyone. The term ham radio operator is misleading. While it's true that you can go out and spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars to buy the latest ham radio gear, install it and operate it to get on the air, the true intention of the hobby in my opinion is one of experimentation. That's where I believe the difference lies and where the true death of the hobby is a threat. Rather than focusing on numbers to represent the livelihood of the hobby, we should focus on engagement. One can just as easily spend a few bucks on some simple electronic components and put something together to get on the air. At the same token, you could spend thousands of dollars on fancy new radio system and still use it to develop something new. It all comes down to whether you want to simply operate a radio or choose to engage and experiment. At the end of the day, you don't really need a license to do either. You could just go buy a CB radio or pick up a set of handhelds at your favorite big box store. But if you truly want to learn the fundamentals of radio and engage with other smart, like-minded people, getting your ham radio license will enable you to do just that. It will give you a good foundation of electronics knowledge to build from, immediately put you into a community of peers who generally enjoy the hobby and like to exchange ideas and experiment. It's really worth the effort. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that if you're not already a licensed ham radio enthusiast, this video has inspired you to become one. I will put links in the description for some resources to get started on your journey. Please be sure to like and subscribe to my videos for more to come. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. We will be focusing on some future content around ham radio and vintage computing, so be sure and stay tuned. Until next time, 73.